we will welcome our speaker. We'll welcome our speaker. Good morning. Good morning. This is a little different for me. I'm used to this tr somewhat traditional services, and that's good. I want to do what's going to work for you guys and what I can do to, to uh, support you as you're in this transition time. Uh, I, I want to make a pitch for camp. Uh, I'm a camper. Uh, I saw my wife at camp. Uh, there was no interest there at the time. Uh, I was dating her best friend at the time. And I didn't know that. Uh, but uh, I, I saw her. And it wasn't until I got to college that there was interest sparked. And I'm certainly glad of that because she was got a choice for me. But I love camp. I got to, I used to spend a lot of time talking to God at camp and understanding uh, what it meant to be saved, and, and, and I, I just appreciated uh, camp. And so, if you have a chance to go to camp, I don't care what age you are. I went when I was like 10 years old, and then I went when I was a teen. Uh, it's, it's a great experience, lots of fun, and uh, you really need to know more about God. And so, I encourage you to do that. One of the things I want to communicate to you. This is my second Sunday being here, and one of the things I want to just reflect back to you, what I sense here, energy. There's a lot of energy here, and uh, there's a lot of enthusiasm for God, and so uh, I just uh, want to communicate that God's at work in your body, and uh, needs to be glorified for that. I would like to open with a word of prayer as I get ready to permit to provide the message. So uh, let's just bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, I come to you this morning with a message that you put on my heart for uh, these good people. I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will come and that you will talk to us and you will draw close to us and, and that this message will really touch right where we're at and that. Uh, we would be encouraged and that we would be strengthened and that we would be drawn closer to you in a relationship that you uh, intended through your son Jesus Christ. I just pray, Lord, that you'll just be here with us in a special way this morning. And then, Lord, I too would like to lift our day to pray, Lord, that you would just uh, draw close to him in the room where he's at, that he'd sense your presence, and that uh, you would just meet uh, his physical need. And meet his emotional and spiritual needs as well. Be with his loved ones, I pray also. I just ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, let me ask you some of you this morning. How many here have ever been down? There ought to be a lot of hands up here. Notice mine is up. Uh, or anybody been depressed? Or uh, just... Uh, Maybe feeling overwhelmed by uh, uh, things or events or whatever. And uh, most of us have been there, right? Yeah. Uh, one of the things I want to communicate, it doesn't matter how spiritual you are, you're going to go through experiences like that. Doesn't matter. Look at the Old Testament. Look at the New Testament. Each men of, of, of uh, godly men have gone through low times. Uh, most of you know who Martin Luther is, I think, the, the founder of the Protestant religion, um, coming out of the Catholic Church and pointing out the fact we're saved by grace. Well, Martin Luther, he was known as a real positive person, but he had a time when he was pretty uh, depressed and down. And he went through a three-day period of that, and uh, he was moped around the house and... Uh, uh, his wife noticed this, and, and uh, after about the third day, she came down from uh, their room, and she was dressed in black. And he was startled by that and said, well, did somebody die? And uh, she said, well, it appears that you think God has died, because uh, 
uh, he said, well, God cannot die. Well, he says, the way you're acting, it sure seems like that's true. And so here was a man, and this is, uh, here's a man who was a godly man who uh, was down and, and, and depressed. So even godly, great godly people uh, deal with feelings of depression and the feeling that God's far away. Well, I'm going to uh, go to a psalm written by, I'm not real sure who, we're pretty sure it's not David. But uh, someone who's going through this. And uh, I think it will speak to us uh, this morning. And it's Psalms 42. Psalms 42. So I want to read that. From his word. Psalm 42. As a deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night. While people sit, say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one. With shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, and from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love, at night his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. I don't know about you, but when I read that, I sense the depression. I sense the feelings that whoever the writer is, uh, is dealing with. Because I have dealt with that, as I, I'm sure many of you have. And so it reflects the, the depression of this author and the, and the agony associated with it. His soul is downcast and he, he's disturbed to the depths of his soul. The author expresses his feelings that God has forgotten him and that he is to the point of mourning about that. Isn't that how we feel when we get really deeply depressed? Don't you feel like God's far, far away? Yes. Well, I feel like that. God's far, far away. And, and you, sometimes we feel abandoned. And so I want to talk a bit about depression. By the way, that is an issue that is high priority in the days we're living in. You do some research and study about how COVID is affecting the kids and, and adults when they're shut in and all that. Depression is an issue. So let me just give you a, a, a definition of depression. It comes off a, a bottle of Prozac. That's a good place to go if you want to read a, 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 a definition of depression. This is what it says. It says, depression isn't just feeling down, it's a real illness with real causes. Depression can be triggered by stressful life events, like divorce or death in the family, or it can appear suddenly for no apparent reason. Some people think you can just will yourself out of depression. That's not true. When you're clinically depressed, one thing that can happen is the level of serotonin, a chemical in your body, may drop. So you may have trouble sleeping feel unusually sad or irritable, find it hard to concentrate, lose your appetite, lack energy, or have trouble feeling pleasure. These are some of the symptoms that can point to depression, especially if they last for more than a couple of weeks and, it, and uh, you just have a difficult time every day dealing with it. Now, I'm not talking about clinical de depression. Clinical depression, you gotta go and get some help. You've got to get some counseling. You may have to take some some uh, uh, 
some drugs to help you deal with it. I know because I've been there. I'm talking about the depression just comes on sometimes because of the situation or circumstances. And, and when that time comes, it's like a pall comes down on us. We aren't able to concentrate on our work or, or on our relationships. And many times we're tempted to retreat from fellowship with those closest to us. Now listen to me, that's one of the biggest temptations is to go hide out. Is it? Yep. Well, that's what I want to do. Turn the TV on and just go brain dead. That's Bob sometimes when he gets like that. Fortunately, I have a wife that won't let me do that very long. <laughs> so we're tempted to stay home rather than maybe come to church or, or go to fellowship. We seek distractions through watching television or going fishing or, or playing video games. I threw that one in because that fits the day. If it isn't addressed, it can become a degenerative spiral where we continue to retreat from all contact with others and even with God himself because we feel like God's far away. It's a spiral that can lead to despair and thoughts of suicide even. That is part of the spiral that occurs. In my job as a principal, I was a principal for 25 years and I dealt with student suicides. And in very, every, every, almost every instance, if I went back and talked to the parents, I saw that that is what happened. They began to retreat. And nobody reached out. Or they didn't have any resource that they could grab onto that could help them bring them up out of that depression. So it's very near and dear to my, my heart, this issue. So I want to go to the psalm. Because in this psalm is the very core of how Christians should deal with depression. Because we're all going to deal with it. How do we deal with depression? All of us go through periods of anxiety and depression where we even question God. What are believers to do when these times come? How do we address these times? Well, the psalmist here in Psalm 42 uh, gives us some clues. First, we need to seek God in prayer in the midst of the depression. Are you hearing me? When you feel depressed, more likely we want to go and focus on something else. The first place we need to do, the first place we need to go is God. We need to pray. If you want to get out of the mood of depression, the first thing, step you need to do is go to the Lord in prayer. Tell God about your feelings and your need for Him. Cry out to God, and He will hear your cry. Notice what it says in verse 1. It says, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. That's a, that's a clue. It says, Seek God. That's what the psalmist did. You know what? When you cry out to God, God hears you. It doesn't matter what's going on, all the circumstances, and, and God has a, a, a way of knowing when you cry out to Him for help, He hears you. I, I ran across a, 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 a quote of Webb told a friend uh, about a, a conversation with a lifeguard who worked in a beach, at a beach. And this lifeguard, this person asked the lifeguard, how can you tell someone's in need of help when thousands of bathers at the beach, have you ever seen them? The beaches down in Florida, they can have thousands of people there. And they have a lifeguard. This is what the lifeguard said. You can always hear that cry for help. Listen, that's what God's like. He always hears the cry for help. Scripture, scripture it's my, I can't remember where it's at, that says, anyone who cries out to God, God will save them. That's a promise. So the first thing we need to do is, is cry out to God. And cry out in prayer. And I, I, I've known times when I've gotten really depressed and, and uh, over a situation at school or, or a situation in the family. And I'm so dense. Now, you guys are dense, but I'm so dense sometimes. It takes me a while to go, hey, why don't I talk to God about it? Instead of stewing about it. And every time I talk to God, I, I begin to take steps towards relief. So that's the first thing. The second, remember the past works of God in your life and the blessings He bestowed in your life. If you look at verses 4 and 6 of this passage, 
In verse 4 it says, These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go with the multitude, leading the procession to the house of God, with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. He's remembering. Look what he says in verse 6. My soul is found cast within me. Therefore I will remember you and the land of Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Nizar. In the midst of any depression, relief comes when we remember the blessings of God. And it's absolutely true. I've gone to bed some nights and just stare. You ever done that? Just stare at the ceiling? And your eyes are closed? And the events of the day just run through your mind and you're just kind of in despair about it? I've been there. <coughs> Let me tell you what works. Start thinking about the blessings of God. Start thinking about the blessings of God. You remember the song, Count Your Blessings? Listen to what the verse, some of the, the, the verses of this. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings. Verse 2 says, Are you overburdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy or you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will be seen as the days go by. And verse 4 says, So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, the angels will attend and help and comfort you to your journey's end. Count your blessings. You ever done that? Don't count sheep. You're looking at the ceiling. Count your blessings. When I do that, when I look back on my life, the longer you live, and you can look back and say, well, God helped me deal with this, and God helped me deal with that. This is nothing. He's going to help me deal with this. Look at the third thing. It says, put your hope in God. You go to verse 5. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why go so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. He wasn't ready to do it then, but he said, I know if I do this and put my hope in God, there will come a time when I will praise Him for getting through this. One thing we who are believers need to understand, and many times God's presence brings an emotional response. We can feel his nearness, but there are just as many times when we don't feel his presence. Did you hear me? There's times we don't feel his presence. We need to understand that God's presence is not a condition of feelings, because this culture loves to focus on feelings. But our relationship with God is not about feelings. Amen. God's presence is conditional to his word. And Matthew 28, 20 carries it. This promise on the very lips of Christ himself. And surely I will be with you always, even to the very end of the age. Amen. It's faith. It's his word. It's not feelings. This promise means that even when we don't feel his presence, he is with us, even in the midst of our anxieties and depressions. He's there when we hurt, and he's there when we pray. We need to put our hope in him and, and give him praise as our Savior and our God. When my mother died, I was 46, 48, and she died ah! after surgery. And I remember I was in the room when she died. And I was overwhelmed by that. And I watched her breath stop. My mother, my godly mother, and she was a godly mother. And I remember walking out of that room, and I was overwhelmed by it all. I was overwhelmed. I lost my mom. And I never really dealt with death until that moment. My parents uh, shielded me from it. I never went to a funeral until I went to my my wife had a couple of people and her family passed away. I went to that funeral. I was kind of overwhelmed by it all. But now my mom. In the midst of that, I felt like God was a long ways away. And the pastor of the church there showed up and, and formed it. He said, let's form a circle of prayer. And I couldn't get into the circle. I was so overwhelmed. And finally, 
Marty helped me get there, and I got and hooked hands with people, and he prayed. And God came. Amen. And God came. In the midst of it all, he showed up. Yes. You know why? Because I, my hope was in him as a 10-year-old boy. I put my hope in him, and I faced my life on him. And I've seen others start to put their hope in and walk away, but I've kept my hope in him to this very day, and I will stay true to the end. Amen. And that's what we're asked to do. And he helps us. And he's with there to, to the end of the age. And he always shows up. He always shows up. There's no such thing in a Christian life, I even say in a non-Christian life, as a coincidence. It's actually the providence of God that shows up. It's the providence of God. When we put our hope in God, when we get in those depressing moments, we put our hope in God, there will come a moment when God shows up. And he gives us just what we need to get through the issue, the depression, the downtime. And oh, when you get on the other side, you can get excited. Look what God did. I ran across a, a story from a Presbyterian pastor named uh, Frederick Beckner. And he, he wrote a book. And in this book, he talked about a time that he was, was going through uh, with just overwhelmed by circumstances and overwhelmed by depression. Listen to what he said. This is from his book. He said, I remember sitting by the curtain roadside once, Beckner wrote, terribly depressed and afraid about my daughter's illness and what was going on in our family. Ah! As he was sitting there thinking about his daughter's illness, he noticed a car that seemed to come from nowhere. His message from God, the word he most needed to see at that moment, was found on the license plate. Here God works in incredible ways. He says it was on the license plate. The license plate bore on it the one word out of all the words in the dictionary that I needed most to see exactly right. He went on to write this. The word was trust. The word was trust. Sitting in his car alongside the road, God's message was revealed on the license plate of a passing car. It's certainly difficult to describe such an experience. This is what he said. Was the experience something to laugh off as a kind of joke? Play, uh, a, a joke life plays on everyone on us once in a while? Or was it with the word of God? That's what he said. He said, for me, it was an epiphany. It was God speaking to me, saying, trust. Interesting. He wrote an article in the paper about this. And he got a visitor uh, within the week after he wrote the article who walked in with a license plate. And on that license plate, now you know what license plates look like after they've been on the back of your car for a long time? Rusted edges, especially my one. <laughs> Rusted edges and and, but on that license plate was the word trust. You know what he did with that? He took that license plate. It was interesting. He found out that the person was a trust officer in a bank. And he put trust on the license plate. Listen, that's how God works. That's how God works. And when you get down and depressed, I'm here to tell you, when you get down and depressed, just open your eyes and start looking. Because God's going to come and he's going to say exactly what you need to say through a friend, through a license plate, through a scripture that opens up in the Bible, or you're in your devotion. I don't know how many times I've seen that. I read my devotions, and there it is. <gasps> what I, just what I needed to hear to help me get through a difficult situation. He put that on his mantelpiece to help him remember that God speaks to us just when we need to know. Now, I don't know where you're at this morning. I don't know where you're at. Some of you might be dealing with down times, depression. I know what happens at church. You put on your best face, you show up, and you smile, and you, uh, uh, you, you 
just want to be positive. I know what happens to me when I come to church and I'm a little down. All I got to do is be around people like you. Doesn't take long till I'm up, and I'm going, "Well, I, 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 I'm ready to go out and fight another day, another week." <laughs> or I come to church and the music is just what I need to hear to get me through a hard time. Or I come to church and I hear just the message I need to hear to help me go take that one or two, three more steps that gets me through the issue and into victory. Because by the way, Jesus Christ gives us victory. Amen. He gives us joy, even in the midst of chaos. That's what Jesus gives to us. And Christ will give us victory if we'll just lay the situation, pray. Put our hope in Him. Count our blessings. And He's going to help us get right through whatever the issue is. So that we can move on to commit, continue to do what He's called us to do. By the way, every single one of us who are Christians have been called to, to do uh, ministry. Remember last Sunday I talked about people when we get Jesus uh, uh, dying and being resurrected and coming back. It gives us purpose. We all have a purpose. We all get gifts. When you get saved, you get a gift. At least one. <laughs> and we're to challenge to use that gift to ministry. And that gives us purpose. Something bigger than ourselves. Like I said, I don't know where you're at. But here's what I want to do this morning. I want you to take some time to pray. And give you an opportunity to pray. If you're having an issue you're dealing with, or, or a situation, maybe you're here and you're going, hey, I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm not a guy at all together. I say praise the Lord for you. There might be somebody here that are, that are struggling. So here's what I want to do. I want us to stand and I want to pray, and then we'll move into the, the, the worship part of the service. Stand with me as we, as we, as we have a word of prayer here this morning. Heavenly Father, I, I just come to you this morning. This is a message that you put on my heart for, for this congregation, these people. It's a message I need to hear. Lord, we live in a world that's uh, cursed by sin. And in that world, we face challenges, we face evil, we face um, sickness, we face death. That's just part of the world we live in. But Lord, you sent Jesus to die on the cross and shed his blood to cover our sins. And then to be resurrected and raised to your right side. To then extend the Holy Spirit to each and every one who puts their trust in you. And Lord, that spirit helps us deal with this world that we live in. And to deal with it victoriously. And Lord, there may be some here this morning who are, are fighting depression. That are fighting circumstances. And uh, uh, all that's associated with that. And Lord, and I would pray that your Holy Spirit would draw close to that soul. Draw close to that person. They sense your presence. And then they would sense that you're with them no matter what's going to happen. You're going to provide just the strength and encouragement and help they need to get through this situation and get through it victoriously. Lord, I pray for that person. Lord, there's some here that, that things are going well, but out down the road they may face uh, depression and, and overwhelming circumstances. Lord, I pray that you, they would uh, understand that you walk with them and will be with them, whatever it may be. Just draw close to them in a, in a very special way there. I just lift this church to you, these people. I pray, Lord, that you would just draw close to them and, and empower them and, and energize them and uh, bless them, I pray. I just ask this in the precious, holy name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.